Truth, Money, and Freedom podcast. Welcome back to Truth, Money, and Freedom. Today is Monday, the 8th of June, 2020. Sorry about the one week long blackout, guys. Sorry, it's work again. I've got way too much work going on. Um, but let me uh, uh, comment here, if you don't mind, on the Minneapolis move to abolish their police department. Um, this is actually something that's near and dear to my heart because I grew up in Minnetonka, Minnesota. Uh, I could have, you know, from where I grew up, I could be in Minneapolis in about 15 to 18 minutes. Um, you know, literally that quickly. That's how close I grew up to Minneapolis. And, of course, everyone who's in the suburbs of Minneapolis knows Minneapolis well. They have gone to Minneapolis for events or for, you know, shopping or something of that nature before. But I do want to talk about this briefly, and I intend to do a much more in-depth podcast with probably with uh, Chaos Craig and uh, Conjecture, also known as Brandon. And uh, the reason being is because... Um, these articles are, are fear porn, even on Zero Hedge. Uh, a police-free future, you know, uh, it wouldn't be police-free. You would have sheriff. You would have law. You know, you would have, you know, the law actually in Minneapolis through the sheriff's office. They're already there. And everyone seems to forget this. And once again, I'm kind of uniquely, um, I am qualified to comment on this because I do work with uh, sheriff's offices and police departments um, quite a bit. I mean, they're my main clientele, you know, for what I do for a living. I, I am not a cop. I am an IT guy that does work in, in cop shops and sheriff's departments. So uh, let me explain to you the, the actual uh, levels of, of accountability there are. And let's start with the sheriff, because that's really simple. The sheriff is elected by the people, so in his county or her county. So they're directly accountable to those voters. Bam. There you go. So if you have a problem with a deputy, then um, you can literally go right to the sheriff, right to the, that deputy's boss, and go and get something done about it fairly quickly, because they're directly accountable. And when it comes to a police department, the, the police chief is not directly accountable because he is not an elected official. He is hired. And he is, depending on the type of, of a municipal government they have in Minneapolis, he may be hired by the city manager or by the mayor or by the council itself, city council. And believe me, I have seen it all three ways, even here in Missouri, because a municipal government... You know, the corporations themselves that make up city governments. And by, by the way, they're 501c3 corporations. Um, and But the corporations can be wildly different from city to city. Actually, even next-door neighbor cities can have a wildly different kind of government. Um, but and, and we're going to talk about accountability here in a second, but I don't want to get too deeply into this because I don't know what kind of government Minneapolis had, uh, city government, that is. So I don't know the, how many layers there were before there was true accountability. Um, but I will say this. In Minneapolis, uh, they have a long history of killing people. And I know this is going to make me unpopular with some people, but I am going to give you my reasons in, in, in detail with a podcast later on. But this is a good move actually to abolish the police department now I know that there's a lot of people who will disagree with that very strongly but you must please listen to people who actually understand government and how it operates and there's lots of things that can be done here to uh, for people to actually start taking responsibility for their own safety and that's the thing with police they kind of tell you we're here for you you don't need to carry a gun we're here for you. You don't need to learn a martial art. You know, they, you know, a lot of police will say that. Sheriffs don't say that, oddly enough. Or here in Missouri, they don't. Um, sheriffs are generally, um, they, they absolutely love that people conceal carry uh, here in Missouri. They've got to do something similar in Minnesota now. They have, to do, they have to do programs here to encourage people to conceal carry. A well-armed society is a polite society. So what about all the other services that police perform? Well, um, these can be performed by any number of other agencies or by um, private 
concerns or just by people themselves. But if people say, well, you know, there goes Minneapolis. It, you know, it's going out the window. It's going to become a crime-filled, crime-ridden place. Once again, it just depends on the people of Minneapolis if they let it get to that point. Because, you know, honestly, if those of you think that organized crime will be the order of the day, I feel that they kind of already had that with the police department there. And I realize that will make me unpopular with some people, but you must please listen to the next podcast that we're going to put out because we will actually describe in detail why getting rid of police and then you can use the sheriff's office you know, the sheriff's office for, you know, the big things, little things you can take care of yourself. Um, but I wanted to kind of set out a, a construct or a framework to help people understand that Minneapolis was full of corrupt cops. And I need you guys to, to work with me on this because I actually used to live there and there were problems with Minneapolis Police Department, you know, literally even 30 years ago. Um, there were issues there and I want to bring up this article right here and by the way everything will be in the description section below I want to talk to you about collective bargaining which is you know basically unions this is the reason why they've had such a difficult time getting rid of corrupt cops um, the whole system is corrupt um, you know and I would like to give a shout out to Brian Young you know at high impact vlogs high impact flicks uh, he's been talking about this for years, years, and actually discussing all the corruption that happens and what what is constitutional and versus what is not. Police departments are not constitutional. Um, they truly aren't because there's no accountability to the people. And for those, we could have an argument, too, that through the city council, there is, you know, accountability for the police department. But the problem is you're already going through layers and there's a layer here that most people don't even think about and that is the police union. An example, if a police officer kills someone while they're apprehending them for a $20 bill counterfeit and they get killed, something happens in the background that we don't see and that's the police union coming in to protect that officer. That's another layer um, between accountability. Um, and, and, and by the way, it obscures the accountability layers for municipal police departments. That's why uh, unions are, for cops are such a bad thing. For them, it's a good thing because they can get away with murder sometimes. And by the way, I'm not just talking about Minneapolis PD. So I, I literally need to help... Um, I need to help everyone understand this police union thing, but we're going to do this in a subsequent video. So uh, the reason I brought it up is because uh, Chauvin had 18 internal complaints against him. And uh, that's something that we still don't know about, and we're talking about Derek Chauvin. We could talk about other cops, too, because, you know, we're talking about Chauvin a lot. But I think we need to remember that there are thousands of, of incidents, um, you know, not necessarily a year, at least hundreds of incidents a year where the police kill someone where they just can't explain why they killed them. Uh, there was no need. They already had them under control. Or they, you know, literally, got, in many cases, my gosh, guys, I mean, Brian is a great place, you know, high-impact vlogs. In fact, I'll link him down below here. I mean, he's got great videos about this, about, you know, people being harassed by the police, people being hurt by the police, and ultimately people being killed by the police, all for the stupidest possible things you could possibly imagine. And we can't seem to get rid of those bad cops. You know, we can't get rid of them. They're still cops, even after the fact. Now, the only reason that Derek Chauvin is enjoying the level of scrutiny he's getting now is because all the videos that showed him murdering someone. Um, that is, in fact, I've seen other videos in the past where they've gotten away with it. They've been, they were able to explain why they had to kill someone or say it was an accident. But the fact of the matter is, I need to go here to uh, Trump now. And by the way, like I said, I'm not reading articles. I got to go because I got to work. But uh, Trump is saying this is a horrible thing, and he's saying the fact that defunding police departments are getting rid of them is uh, something that Joan B Joe Biden has to own now in the campaign. Well, the fact of the matter is um, we have in this country 
uh, two sets of laws. You know, we have a set of laws for the common folk, and then we have a set of laws for politicians and law enforcement. And they get away with things that we could never get away with. So what is the point of having law enforcement then, if they can actually break the laws? The, the first and foremost thing of any law enforcement officer is to be an example. And they serve as horrible examples in many occasions. And by the way, I'm not going to throw in sheriff's departments with that at this time. I do have criticisms of sheriff's departments too, but at the same time, police department is less accountable and therefore they get away with more stuff, way more stuff than a sheriff could get away with. Um, and, and, and I don't know about other states, but in Missouri, um, sheriff department, you know, they're not part of unions, so like police departments are, because that's a city thing versus a county thing. Uh, the only thing I can think of that they organize for is probably for their retirement, you know, in a sheriff's office, and that's about it. But um, Trump, once again, is critical of getting rid of the police department in this article. But once again, again, there is absolutely no talk about the sheriff's office that already polices that area. And polices is, is uh, I use that very deliberately. So they do have law. It's not like they would completely have no law enforcement. But there are other things that they can do to protect themselves, and we'll get into that in the subsequent subsequent. Uh, uh, podcast, but I want everyone to know that I am watching this one. Uh, I don't have a lot of time right now, but this one, like I said, is where I grew up. And I think that um, the people of Minneapolis, if they actually understand what's going on, and if, if they're educated, I think that um, Minneapolis could become one of the safest cities in the United States of America if everyone gets, you know, concealed carry permits. Anyone can be carrying a weapon then. Anyone. And then, of course, criminals won't be as likely to try anything. So it works wherever they do it. Here in Missouri, we've done it, and crime has gone down. Violent crime has gone down quite a bit. Um, so it's something to consider. But I'm not an anarchist, um, although sometimes I feel I should be. Um, but I do think that getting rid of police departments um, may be a good thing on many levels. And like I said, we will get into the to that in another podcast and we'll have more points of view in it and in fact uh, we may even some have someone in there who is pro police department to come and give us that side of the argument um, truth money and freedom uh, we have a discord server we have a lot of smart people in there and we talk about these things all the time um, and I don't claim to be uh, one of the smartest people there in fact I know I'm not but I'm, I'm probably just the most vocal and um, that's really, truly about it. So if you guys are interested in these types of conversations, we have a Discord server, and it's listed down below in the description section. Anyone's welcome. And it's a, a text chat, but it's also a voice chat. So folks go in there and, and have these discussions, and also on finance. So I mean, there's a lot of finance stuff going on in there as well, but the talk about this police department thing, of course, is a big one. Um, I think that it's very important for everyone to actually listen to all sides of this debate before they form an opinion on whether or not it's a good idea to disband the Minneapolis Police Department is all I am saying. Because there are some really, really good options that play very well into libertarianism. And also, too, I meant city ordinances. I didn't want to bring that up on this one here. But the enforcement arm of the uh, city corporation... And that's the pro one of the problems that needs to be dealt with. All these, uh, quote-unquote, laws that cities have, they're not laws, they're ordinances. And they're enforced by the police, and then, of course, you get your fines from the police. And uh, this is how they fund part of their operations. So it is uh, against their interests, you know, basically to get rid of a police department because the city gets funded through the law enforcement activity on that. And I'm kind of curious uh, uh, how that would go in a debate, but uh, they're not talking about that yet. They're saying already, the council members in Minneapolis are saying we have many things to figure out yet, you know, before we, you know, you know, figure this whole thing out. But we do want to listen to the community, you know, find out what the community wants. Um, so at any rate, a, a very vigorous, important debate here for a highly, highly unprecedented event. Um, are in order here so that good information can flow 
to what Minneapolis does next. So intelligent people are necessary here to figure out how we can have safety and security along with freedom. And that's the freedom word keeps getting missed when you talk about taking police department. Uh, but that's what you get. You get freedom for the first time in a long time, a lot of freedom, and there's responsibility that comes with freedom. And these are the arguments that need to be had while this happens in Minneapolis. People need to take responsibility for their own safety. They have to. And stop relying on government to do it for you because government just keeps getting bigger and bigger and then you get psychopaths and sociopaths and the law enforcement part of your government and before long your neighbors are getting killed as they're being arrested for passing $20 counterfeit bills. And by the way, I hate to keep using that as an excuse because they've never produced any evidence that there was a counterfeit bill passed. Um, then no evidence at all. That's just what they've said. But they also said that uh, George Floyd was resisting arrest. The video shows that that's simply not true. So um, the police lie to us um, and, you know, to defend their actions for killing a man. And I think that once those videos came out, the police had absolutely no choice but to fire those men. But this happens all across America, gang. And by the way, uh, I don't care about color. Color doesn't matter here. I mean... Um, killing a white guy, um, Minneapolis kills a whole, Minneapolis PD has killed a whole lot more white folks than they have black folks. I'm talking about just killing people. Everyone has a right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And the police took that right away from George Floyd. And from others, by the way. They took those rights away. Those are constitutional rights given to you by your creator. And the police unilaterally decided you couldn't have those anymore. So what kind of a force do we want? That's what we're going to discuss. Um, I'll tell you what, um, we're going to probably do this podcast within a day or two. And, uh, and then we'll get it posted up. But I'd like you guys to hear the unique points of view of what a city should be or c can look like without a police force, if done properly. But the problem is, is that the powers that be will make it difficult and not to mention scary. For all the residents there, they will make it as scary as possible so they can try and get the police, you know, basically reinstated somehow. Or uh, really arm up the sheriff's office so that the sheriff's office has just as big a presence in Minneapolis as the police had. So there are, you know, pitfalls to this. But there are ways that people can actually get around this problem and uh, be safer. And uh, they just have to take responsibility. That's all they have to do. If they don't want to take responsibility, they should move to a place that has enormous police forces like New York or Los Angeles. All right, gang, that's all I have for you for now. Look forward to another uh, podcast that we'll be doing from um, uh, Truth, Money, and Freedom. And it will be within a day or two, and it will be on this very subject. And I'll also be giving stories. Um, from my personal experience of where I sat in and heard corruption, um, uh, you know, basically at a city level and, and tell you what happened there. I'm not going to give you the names of the city but or the names of the players, but I will give you the stories that happened. Um, so uh, you guys will really, really like that. And I've been emboldened, I think, to talk about these things because of this Minneapolis uh, police, you know, um, situation where they're disbanding the police department. Okay, gang, I really have to go. You all have a wonderful day. May God bless each and every one of you.